Hi, it's Father Jeremiah, and today we're going to learn about how to set the altar for communion. There's a lot of new people in the altar guild, there's a lot of old hands on the altar guild, and this is, will be a video teaching you how to do it and also can act as a refresher after you've been trained to help you remember all the details of what we're doing. But now we're going to look at the underside of the altar now and see what all the boxes are that are behind the altar. And so there's lots of items underneath the altar here. And the first box that we're going to pull out is going to be this box right here that has our hurricane globes in it. So we pull those out and set them up here on the table. And then we get our candles, which usually are sitting out on top of one of the boxes. If you need new candles, there's a couple of boxes under here with fresh candles. And so we'll just set these up here on the altar and get the globes over them. And you'll see all the stuff all completely set up in a few minutes. The next thing that we will do is pull out the book stand that has the prayer book on it. So we just take that out and set it up on the table. And then we will pull out this other box. This big box here has all of our communion elements in it. It has our wafers, our bottle of wine, the patent and chalice and everything that goes with that. So we'll just start pulling these items out and you just set them up on the altar. All the communion dishes, I guess you can call them, are all in nice little felt bags to protect them and to keep them from getting damaged while they're stored for the week. So we'll set all these things up on the table. And so you can see there's lots of items up here. So we'll go ahead and unpack each thing. So there's the chalice. And then here is what looks like another chalice, but it's called the ciborium. It is for the wafers to be stored over on the credence table, the lid for that, our patent, and then the platter that will be set on the credence table that the cruets of water and wine will be set on. So we'll get all these little bags off the table. And also next to that box under the table is our pyramid box. In this box is all of our white linens that we use for each service. So we've got our, our linen cloths here. One will go over the chalice, one will go on the remembrance table, and one will go in the communion cup bowl. So we'll set these up here. And then we have our pieces of cloth that go over the chalice and the cup. The chalice and the patent, I should say. So those are up here and we have these in different colors. Right now we're using green because it's the season after Pentecost. We have white ones, we have red ones, we have purple ones that are used in other church seasons and we'll use those as we need them. So now we have all the main things out for communion and setting up the table, we'll start setting up the table. So the first thing that we will do is we'll take one of the long white linen cloths and we'll drape that over the top of the chalice. We'll set the patent on top of that. And in the patent, before you put the green cloths on it, we take one of these large wafers. We only use one of these a week, so they last for a long time. That's the wafer that I break during the Eucharistic prayer. And so we put that inside the patent. And after that, we have this green square that goes on top. And then this final piece of cloth that will be set on top of that. If you'll come a little closer with the camera. As you can see, we just drape it over. Then after we drape it over, we push the middle part in in order to create the angles on each side and we just straighten it out nice and neat. And it takes some practice. And each week you'll get better. Each time you help set up the table, you'll get a little bit better at doing this. And so that's how that will look. We've got the book stand here. We also have the candle snuffer that will be somewhere under the table. Um, I like to just keep that over here on the side of the book stand so that it's easy to access at the end of church so that we can snuff out the candles. We also do have gluten-free wafers. There's a, my little communion box is a little black box with a handle that has a small pattern. We just pull that out and put one gluten-free wafer on it and we may need to use more of those as we grow, but right now we uh, typically only have to use one a week. So we just set that on the table on the little pattern, just one of those in order for it to be ready to be consecrated when the time comes. So after we get this set up, we go over here to the credence table. Now on the credence table, we're gonna have this small platter where the cruets will go and we'll get to those cruets in a minute. Then we have the ciborium. 
You just take the lid off and here are the wafers. These wafers, you, we usually use about 30 of them right now a week, give or take. So you can just add a good number into the ciborium, pop the lid back on. We'll put that in the box in a minute. And then you put the lid back on the ciborium. And when the time comes, I will count those out onto the patent so that we don't get too many of them and use, and use what we need. And then we also have this bowl. This is the bowl for catching the consecrated water when the acolyte washes my fingers um, after I prepare the table and before we move into the time of, of the Eucharistic prayer. So that just goes over here on the table also, on the credence table, with the other long white linen cloth. And so you just set that right there next to it. And so that's how that is set up. And we'll get to the cruets in a few minutes. So I'll put this, these items away that are still sitting out. And one other thing that's hiding under the table is our individual communion cups. Those are over on the gospel side of the table at the very front of it, and they're just small communion cups. There's lots of them in there. We have a few left over that we put in the Ziploc bag right now. So we'll go over to the little table and show you how to set those up right now. So one of the cloths that we pulled out of the box was this big square one. That goes on this table here. And that's where we will place our individual communion cups. And so those will either be in a sleeve of cups or in this Ziploc bag. And you just take them and just set them on the table in neat rows. We usually use about 30 of these cups or set out about 30 just to be on the safe side that we have plenty and um, can always add more if we have that need for more of them. And over here on this green chair is a little white bowl. This white bowl is where we dispose of the communion cups after they've been used. Inside that white bowl is the last white linen cloth. And it's the small linen cloth and it just sits in the bowl. You just lay it in it and press it down and it's ready to go and those cups will be put over there after they have been used. So now we're going to move over to the kitchen and show how to get the wine and water cruets ready. All right, so now we are in the kitchen. One of the things that we do in the kitchen is get the cruets ready in here because this is where you can spill something and it won't affect the table. Um, so we have the cruets sitting here. They're on their drying rack. This will be found usually over here in our cabinet, our Grace Anglican cabinets that are right next to the refrigerator here in the kitchen area. So they're usually just right here on this bottom shelf in this little corner. Um, if they're not sitting out on the table or on the counter already, they'll be in there. Uh, we used to keep them inside the boxes with the chalice and the patent and everything else, but now we just leave them in here to dry throughout the week. So the first thing that you're going to do is just take them off the drying rack and set them here. We've got three different ones. Two of them will hold wine in them and one of them will have just regular water. The one that holds regular water is completely clear and has no markings on it whatsoever. So you just add a little bit of water to it. That's a little bit too much in it. Usually about a third to a, a quarter to a third full right there in the bottom. And then you just dry it off after you spill the water on it and set it off to the side with one of the little stoppers in it. Then we have our primary wine cruet. As you can see, it's a little stained from always having wine in it and being used constantly. So this one needs to be cleaned out completely, but the, right now it's a little stained. So all you do is take the wine bottle that you'll bring with you from under the altar and just slowly pour the wine in. As you can see, I got a little paper towel to catch any drips. And so this isn't, a, isn't quite how much we use every week, but this is just an example. So we usually fill it up to about a third full in order for it to have enough wine for everyone who's there. And I take the paper towel and just kind of wipe it out a little bit right there so that it won't dry up. Because if you leave the wine there, I've discovered the stopper will get stuck in it over the course of the service. Now we have a third cruet that has a little Cairo symbol on it. This is for our extra wine. So we'll add a little bit of wine to this one in case we need it at the altar later in the service. But right now for examples and for teaching, we're just gonna do these two cruets. So we have a cruet of water and the cruet of wine. And so we'll just carry those out to the credence table and we leave the bottle of wine in here 
because if we're using this one, there may be leftover wine, and so we'll just pour it back in the bottle because it hasn't been consecrated yet. And so it can return to the bottle to be used later. So we'll just walk back out here and head up to the credence table where you can see where these go. These cruets just sit on the platter right here. And so we put the water in the front and the wine on the back and set them there and they will stay there. If you bring the extra cruet out, if we have to, uh, if we do the extra cruet of wine, which we normally do do, we would just set it back here on the back corner of the back middle of the credence table where it will stay right there. So the next thing that we're going to do is talk about how to now empty out and clean these after communion is done. Usually when communion is done, all these things, well, the cruet with the wine will be left on the table after settling everything and finishing communion, and there won't be any wine left in it um, because I consume all of it that's left over. Anything that's been consecrated is consumed before we finish our time of communion. And so after that, we would take everything back to the kitchen, the cruets and the bowl with the used communion cups in them in order to clean them and dispose of them properly because all the wine has been consecrated. There is consecrated water that will be in this little bowl also. And so we take all these things back to the kitchen. So we'll go back that way. We'll pretend that there are cups, communion cups inside the bowl right now. And so we're gonna head back that way and walk through cleaning these items out and preparing them to be packed away for the week. All right, so if there were used communion cups inside of this bowl, we just would take the white linen out and let all those cups just sit in the bowl and then just take it and set it over here in the sink. We would take, if there's any consecrated water left over, we would take that and pour it in there and then add a little bit of extra water to it to swish it out and pour that in on those cups, on those small communion cups and take this and put it back over there. And for an example if this was had any wine left over in it we'll pretend that this is the extra wine so you would just take it and pour it back in the bottle since it has not been consecrated we can put it back in with the rest of the wine and pack it away and use it later for future communion services so then we would take this and since there's always a little bit of remnants of, of water and wine left in it we would then fill it up and swish it out well and pour that into this bowl also with all the used communion cups. Take it and set it up here to dry now. And if there's not enough water to cover up all the small communion cups, we just add some more water to it in order to make sure that all the communion cups get water in them and can be rinsed out and get any remnants of consecrated wine out and mixed with the water. And so after we do that, we would take all those communion cups and we would take them out and any water that was left in this would also be poured in because that would have some consecrated water left in it and we would pour that in with all this. And so we would take all the communion cups out of this and set them on the white linen cloth over here just to drip out of. And whatever water is in here, which would have consecrated wine mixed in with it, have some consecrated water mixed in with it, all of this, this bowl is just carried outside and just poured out into the grass and just bring this bowl back in. And then we just take the communion cups after they've sat here for a couple minutes while we were pouring that out. And then we can dispose of the communion cups in the trash can because they have been cleaned. They have been cleaned and taken care of. There's no, should be none of the consecrated elements left in them at that point so they can be disposed of properly. And so that's how we clean up. And then we just take this bowl back into the sanctuary, collect up all of our linen cloths and pass them to whoever is going to be washing them that week. That's another aspect of Altar Guild is cleaning the linens and we'll talk about that later and how to do that and get a good rotation going for that. So I hope this all makes sense and is helpful. And all right, now that we've taken care of things inside the kitchen and cleaned the cruets, now we're going to pack away everything that we've gotten out for communion. And so with all that done, we have our extra, our linens and we'll just set them off to the side so that they are ready to be cleaned and taken care of. And so we just undo everything that we did at the beginning. Just fold up our paraments here and take a, cause this will not, this will be wadded up inside of the communion cup because it will have been used. And so we'll just set that off to the side so it can be cleaned. And then behind the tape, then we'll get back in the communion box and pull out all the bags that had everything in them. So these are back out and we just put everything back in the bags like this. 
And when we're all done with that, we would just set them all back in the communion box and pack everything away. And that will complete everything. And then we have cloths that we put over the top of the altar here. And the credence table, those cloths protect them and just keep, every, keep the white linens clean during the week when it's not being used. And so we'll just lay those back out over them and that would complete everything that we do, putting everything back in the boxes where it came from and covering the altar back up. So thank you for watching this video and I hope that this is helpful and is a good teaching time for you and a good review of everything that we do to set the altar. Thank you very much.